Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. This video was kind of made ad hoc while just sitting at my desk and thinking of something to do. Recently, I bought a bunch of generic Zyrtec, which is the active ingredient of cetirizine hydrochloride at 10 mg. Recently, I bought a bunch of generic Zyrtec, which has the active ingredient of cetirizine hydrochloride at 10 mg. So I thought to myself, why not just make a topical solution? I have so many random carriers and powders and just all these random things here in my apartment. And I'm bored, and you know, boredom really gets to me sometimes, so let's just do this video. So this may warrant a video, a proper video in the future in and of itself, but recently I was sent a study by a subscriber, and it kind of prompted me to move into the direction of making this video. And as some of you may know, cetirizine has been tested in clinical trials as a possible growth stimulant for hair follicles, especially in the condition of androgenetic alopecia, also known as male pattern baldness. The study titled, quote, Efficacy of cetirizine 1% versus minoxidil 5% topical solution in the treatment of male alopecia, unquote, authored by Mustafa et al., published in the Journal of Pharmacy and Pharmaceutical Sciences in 2021, aimed to evaluate the effectiveness of cetirizine 1% solution compared to minoxidil 5%, in treating male androgenetic alopecia. So while the authors proposed that cetirizine could potentially inhibit the release of prostaglandin D2 and stimulate the release of prostaglandin E2, thus fostering hair growth, the results indicated that although cetirizine was effective, according to the study, minoxidil showed significantly higher efficacy in increasing both total and vellus hair density. And despite the promising theoretical framework, I'm unconvinced about the study's conclusions due to several limitations. Now, I'm just going to be honest, there aren't that many growth stimulants that can compete with topical or oral minoxidil, so I guess it makes sense, right? Minoxidil was found to be more efficacious than this cetirizine. But the single-blinded nature of the study raises concerns about potential biases, particularly in the assessment of outcomes such as hair density and growth phases, which could influence the results favorably towards the known effects of minoxidil. They also did some weird things, in my opinion, where they would split the studies into two phases, where they had a 16-week treatment phase with either cetirizine or minoxidil given to one of these groups, and they called this the antigen phase. And then they followed this up by a 8-week drug-free phase where they would try to induce a telogen phase. Now, you know, certain people have different growth rates for different hair follicles that are impacted by AGA, androgenetic alopecia, differently. So the time it takes one hair follicle to come out of its dormancy could drastically vary between the groups and just between individuals. So just another reason why I did not like this study. So maybe I'll do a more in-depth video on this in the future, but it doesn't really look that promising that cetirizine, topical cetirizine, can serve as a good growth stimulant. But maybe when it comes to mast cells and controlling them in the scalp for possible conditions like lichen planus pilaris, it could be promising, right? Just treating local inflammation. But at that point, again, you might as well just consume cetirizine orally. I would tend to agree with their findings that there weren't significant adverse reactions, even considering their low sample size, which, by the way, could make something like side effect profile of the topical treatment non-generalizable. But I hold this stance because cetirizine has been on the market for decades now, and it is considered generally safe. Don't get me wrong here, I'm not saying I'll be using this on my scalp. It would be better to just orally consume the cetirizine pills. To begin, the objective is to prepare a 1% cetirizine solution, which translates to 1 gram of cetirizine per 100 milliliters of solution. For a 60 milliliters bottle, this requires 0.6 grams of cetirizine. Since each generic Zyrtec tablet contains 10 milligrams of cetirizine, you will need 60 tablets to reach the 600 milligrams or 0.6 grams target. The process starts by accurately counting out 60 of the 10 mg cetirizine tablets. These tablets need to be crushed into a fine powder. A mortar and pestle can be effective for this purpose, ensuring the tablets are uniformly pulverized. This step is crucial as it helps in the complete dissolution of the active ingredient in the subsequent solvent. However, 
it's essential to consider the presence of excipients or fillers in the tablets. These fillers are inert substances added during the manufacturing of tablets to give bulk aid in the tablet making process and enhance the stability of the active ingredient. When you crush 60 tablets and weigh the resulting powder, you can expect the scale to show more than 600 milligrams. In fact, it might display up to 18 grams due to the presence of additional substances. This significant discrepancy is anticipated because the fillers, while not contributing to the therapeutic effect of the solution, must still be considered in the final volume calculation. The overall composition of the solution might look something like this. You would have purified water, which would make approximately 45 milliliters. Next, the isopropyl alcohol, about 10 milliliters. Also, humectants, either propylene glycol or glycerin. And glycerin and propylene glycol, or PPG, enhance drug delivery by improving the solubility and stability of active ingredients, ensuring that they're effectively absorbed and that they maintain their efficacy. So you'll always see the two being used in solutions, but there are other alternatives out there. And also the preservative phenoxyethanol at 0.6 milliliters. So this preservative is good at killing bacteria and just keeping the overall integrity of the solution somewhat together. To dissolve the crushed powder, isopropyl alcohol serves as an excellent solvent. Begin by measuring and adding approximately 12 milliliters of ethanol to a 60 milliliter glass dropper bottle. Then transfer the crushed powder into the bottle containing isopropyl alcohol. Stir or shake the mixture thoroughly to ensure complete dissolution. It might be necessary to add a bit more isopropyl alcohol or a small amount of water to help dissolve any clumps that form. Once the cetirizine is fully dissolved, adjust the volume to achieve the desired total of 60 milliliters. If additional volume is needed after adding the cetirizine and ethanol distilled water, may be used to fill the dropper bottle up to the 60 milliliter mark. Now going back to the number of pills that one would need for the entirety of the solution, remember if we're dealing with 10 milligram cetirizine pills or tablet, each tablet being 10 milligrams, and the overall composition of the 60 milliliter solution, we want 600 milligrams for a 1% concentration, that would mean that we would need 60 pills. So 60 times 10 obviously being 600. So that being the 600 milligram total that we're putting into that bottle. So just as a reiteration to remind the audience. Now, to be honest, because you still have those excipients that I mentioned earlier, because when you're using these generic pills, you're not going to get the pure cetirizine from them. That means when you crush it up and you put it into a solution, you're going to see a lot of this milky cloudiness to it. And that should be fine. Now, I don't have some sort of motorized mixer or a shaker of some kind, so I'm just going to leave it like that. I'm not actually going to use this on myself, so be safe. Don't do this on your own. I'm going to have to keep reiterating this over and over again, you know, just to be safe. Don't do this. Don't try this at home. Obviously, go to a doctor, blah, blah, blah. You'll hear it again later on in the video as part of the mandatory disclaimers. So this is essentially the final product. And yeah, this kind of bootleg uh, compounding video, but that's pretty much it for this video and uh again not a medical advice just a guy on youtube when it comes to videos like this you always want to check with your doctor before you do anything right for something like compounding a topical cetirizine it would be better for you to go to a dermatologist get a prescription for a compounding pharmacy to create something in a much more controlled and reliable and safe setting so this was just an educational video again do not do this on yourself don't use it on yourself and uh, don't take it as something for you to like do all right it's educational so <laughs> relax anyway thanks for watching this video and i hope to see you on the next one peace out and be safe